Welcome back everyone to Old Rural Blues. I'm your host, Mr. Camp or Calm Asylum Lover. Right now we got a report on ordering out. This report is informing you as of the growing phenomenon colloquially referred to as the ordering out, a play in the name of the orderlies and some pre-war slang regarding restaurants. It appears some individuals have been abusing the authority of the orderlies to perform inspections of the mental health of individual citizens by making false reports, typically. They make up some story about how a neighbor they dislike has been expressing suicidal thoughts, thus prompting the orderlies to perform an extensive check-in. These check-ins prove burdensome and disruptive, resulting in diminished trust between the orderlies and the communities. Oh, I said the suicide word within two minutes? Oh, too bad I'm demonetized already. However, the practice is not always based on the orderlies being trickled. Some are known to the market their power... Uh, some are known to market the power to do this and are thus commissioned to perform the check-ins. Some cases have even resulted in the individual being deemed mentally unwell, without evidence, and taken to the calm asylum. While they are known to be reassessed and released, the orderlies typically insist they were simply being cautious and bringing them to us, never confessing their wrongdoing. While evidence of known perpetrators has been compiled and attached to this report, I'm confident more exists. A full investigation may turn up more perpetrators, but such a disruption to our operations may prove unpopular and costly. I await a recommendation on how to proceed, Colonel Lawrence O'Hara. Order a full investigation. I believe in our troops. Uh, it's probably best to know what's going on. As they're still doing Highland occupation, under most for fortunate circumstances, we've been forced to administer the former lands of the Highland Watch. We shall endeavor to make sure our occupation is just and fair. We get some compliance. Suspicious mind. So what you're telling me? Is these men already reported dead? Uh, uh, Kristen sat across from Wendy Sykes, having come to meet her in the orderly barracks. Yes, Miss Beckworth. Beckwith. I saw the report myself when he said. And you don't find that a little bit suspicious, Kristen leaned forward in her chair, staring more intently. I mean, it happens when he rubbed the back of her neck. One time I reported dead because the dead girl had hair like mine, but I guess it's a little suspicious these guys didn't have a patrol officer with them. Right. Thanks for your time, Major. Kristen got up from the table to leave. Wendy bade her farewell, but she paid little attention. She felt like she was on the trail of something suspicious, and yet Julian had told her not to poke too many hornets' nests around the calm asylum. If this wasn't a real problem, she could embarrass them both. This demands investigation. Something suspicious about the Rollins affair will be discovered. It's likely an embarrassed establishment. I'll oh, forget it. I want to see. Let's dig in. Um, let's see. So what do we got here? Eagle Rock. We can't go to war with Eagle Rock. Hmm. So, oh, we read this one last time. So you are to this one. Please go ahead. Boop. Uh, I could use more political power. Uh, was two divisions enough to hold out here? Probably not, in all honesty. It's hanging down here because I do want them to attack us like crazy. I want to beef up the special forces. Usually I wait and lower what we need or get the things that allow us to modify our doctrines at a very cheap cost, but I just want to kind of want to go to war. Any more special forces is good than that for sure. Yeah. So if we go to war with them now, then we happen. They don't have a trade node there yet. We can't see what they're doing. Because it would be great if we could wait till they become a trade node, but we're gonna get one in anyway, so. And I just want some straight up war. Ah. See, I knew they attacked us, but false flag. Kristen had finally found her proof. Exhuming one of the bodies was a nasty enough little trick, uh, or task, but it was necessary to get an autopsy done. With a little help from her follower friend, she had something to show Julian. But on her way to make the delivery, she was stopped outside the calm asylum's grounds by Valerie's muscular mammoth. So you were the one that unearthed the grave, Beckwith, Barado asked with a hint of irritation. Guess the cat's out of the back, or some flash autopsy reported him. I'll let you in on a secret. Many of their wounds were inflicted post-mortem. The fatal ones coincide with the original casualty report. So a group of men who allegedly died a few days earlier suddenly appeared on her border and sparked a war. Only did someone with the rank in the orderlies could have pulled that off. I doubt Colonel Straight Laces would do it, so my money's on General Jackass. Dearborn, Barado spat on the ground in contempt. We should bring the report to Valerie at once. Are you kidding? So we can help her set a ride over it? Uh, so we can help her achieve justice. Surely you realize Julian will want a softer solution. Kristen had admitted he had a point. When she thought about it, Julian would probably try to solve us quietly. Even she would, pre would prefer to see William swing, but on the other hand, maybe Julian's way would cause us panic. Hmm... William, huh? What do we have here employed? William. We don't want to get rid of him. Chief Orley is probably good to have. 
Inspect the robotics. Hmm. He rejoins way. Well, how much influence do they have? Joins at what? Four. It's quite a few. Seven. Valerie. Go to Julian first. Let's see what happens. Let's push forth to deal with this for now. Let them just run into us. It's fine. Uh, Autos on duty. We went to a look up to Army Military Command. Well, we're marketing ourselves. Cedric's going to get more influence too. And then this one too. Ooh, if you're in this one, please go ahead. Because I do want to do that route. Let's see. Where's Cedric at? He's at four. It's quite a bit. It's not bad. Agency. Now I have a physical copy of the Constitution in the record room. You may read it there if you so desire. <clears throat> not what I was getting at. Maya. Julian spoke up from a seated position in Maya's office. Despite the fact she had no functional purpose for sitting, she always took a seat wherever someone visited her. I don't mean by what authority could you assume control of call minds. I don't want to know what made you decide to do so. Maya's face was incapable of betraying it, but she had to think on this one. Out of many failed attempts to contact various authority figures, I deduced that no person was willing or able to restore the call minds of Salomon Corporation. Thus, I assume the responsibility personally. But why assume any responsibility? You told me you were just about to advise. If you weren't instructed to, why leave the column asylum at all? A period of silence ensued. Julian decided to follow up. You wanted roughly, you waited on roughly 100 years. Why the time period? Why not 10 years after no contact? 30? 50? I'm afraid I have no adequate response. Then allow me to offer an explanation. I think you're capable of greater autonomy than you might realize yourself, and I think it might be wise to limit your questions. Question your limits. Why is the question? I'm just curious. Why not thought? A waste of time. Spoiler alert, apparently Maya can become a full army. So if we really want to duel we go this way. Acknowledging reality. A moment to breathe. Hippocratic doctrine. Um, you're right in the Constitution. What's wrong with these kids? Uh -huh. Critical curriculum. How much influence does he have? He has quite a few. And we have other options I don't need to take it as, so. Let me go with a waste of time. Apologize, just because we need more influence for him or her. Six. Because where are the other ones we get more Julian influence? Yeah, here. And I don't want to get him too high. Cedric gets more influence too. Julian gets even more influence. And a lot of influence, so it's a waste of time. <clears throat> Uh, survey. Maya sends survey requests to those living in her territory semi regularly, but she believes it might perform an internal review of the operations of her hospital exploration. Might help. Even if she is aware that some of them are not behaving in accordance with the regulations, who knows what else she might find. Doing justice, before we address the regular schedule of the meeting, Maya began uh, as the board took their seats. Uh, I would like to announce that I've seen fit to make a sizable investment to aid the former communities of the Highland Watch. A mix of emotions played out across the board. Approval, confusion, and one man's face anger. Why would we invest in them? Willing spoke out. They murder our orderlies and provoke a war. We should be punished them, not. My held up her right hand. My reasons many, General Dearborn, but I must remind you to show decorum in the boardroom. Once satisfied that Willing would not interrupt again, she continued. The war with the Highland Watch was a tragic mistake, and it's in blood American blood. It was spilled over what may have been a misunderstanding. Therefore, I'm committed to ensuring that the communities are now in our care do not suffer unduly for this. William opened his mouth to protest once more, but Julian spoke up first. If you have any questions about my reasoning, Perhaps we could approach her after the meeting is adjourned, Mr. Dearborn. A sly smile betrayed more than necessary. The confused William agreed to wait till later, but was not prepared for what we would learn. A quiet justice. William Dearborn's crime exposed behind closed doors, leading to his dismissal from office and arrest. Others might be disappointed at a lack of accountability for the, to the calm asylum, but Julian believes that this is the best course of action, especially after consult, see, blah, 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 convincing my to send more aid to Rollins as a result. Fasten the torch with William Dearborn removed. A new commander must be appointed. Maya is only planning to consider candidates of exceptional talents and seniority. Besides, this goes to the potential generals. There's also a political factor to consider. Each one has their loyalties. Their voice on the board may steer conversations in different directions. Back with Lawrence O'Hara, Brave Bravado, Point Nicole Beauregard. Well, I want Maya to get more influence. Is solidifying powers eight. So let's go back over here. Influence. Uh, 
one rich threshold. They may include individual leaving their allies which, uh, leaving with them, penalties to various state parameters. There's a rebellion scenario. The number four is known to be auspicious in some cultures. Should an individual reach his number, something might happen. I think something bad might happen. Huh. Oh, we have no money. Dry blowers, which must be defense. Dry blower, harder than over. Just in case, I think that's a bad idea, especially when they're at war. But whatever. Uh -huh. Need more money. Good sell researches. I don't hold on to that. We're just a little bit bankrupt right now. Gunsmithing's good. Uh, so since we're gonna go, I'm gonna, like I said, we're gonna, uh, well, maybe not, like I said, but we're gonna go with robots because we usually don't get a lot of robotics tech. So I would like to use them as much as we can. So a little ahead of time, a little ahead of time. Stun baton. Go a bit ahead of time, we don't need that one, that one. Go ahead of time. Special Forces Learn. Very nice. We're getting there. And have recovery even faster, hopefully. Please don't raid me. Our recruitment scheme. With the knowledge of those living within our borders, Ma can find both those with the skills to help and the best means and testament to her service. Maya has a way with words. Uh, toast, here's to us, Cedric and Nicole click the glass together. Uh, from the Battle of Redfield to the cozy apartments of this wacko hospital. Things are on the up and up or all around. Here, here, Nicole proceeded to chug her drink in one go. But speaking of Redfield, I'm so suspicious of that robot lady. Who knows what kind of switches you might flip on that thing? She's been running this place for decades. If she was going to flip out at some point, you'd think it would have already happened. That's the thing about bots, said. One poor sap can run afoul of the trigger word after a century of them gathering dust, or maybe it'll be something more typical. Like trying to usurp her authority over this place? Relaxing on his apartment sofa, Cedric had to think about that one, though. He always loved the idea of having more, but he was willing to. But was he willing to try and take it all? I want it all. I don't need it all. Sorry, I really want to see Maya just go through this one. Oh. Okay. Spitting of the atom. Old bones, yeah. The southeast lays the territory of our boroughs, founded by a self proposed goddess and dedicated to militant eugenics. As a community in desperate need of our services, as do the motley collection of raiders and hostile tribes that he had opposed her. Yeah, nothing here says, like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have this stuff. Man, tribute. No, kill yourself. Please, do yourself in. Hello. Oh, nice. Let you all learn there. What are we going to do with our political power? Let's see. Chief of the Air Force, Gopi Technology, sure. Chief of the Navy, sure. Passive Kaz income, okay. Uh, Canaan Connection, Pharmaceutical Development. Well, you know what? I want more political power. Humble humanitarian. Cooperation is key. Julian Clement and his older sister Valerie were both impoverished citizens of the NCR. Their family turned to the followers for aid, and the siblings grew integrated into the followers' community. Julian specialized in psychiatry, whereas Valerie became a computer and robotics technician. Despite his shared experience with his sister, Julian's faith in the followers' core message does not waver. He believes in a world where violence is shunned, can truly overcome the mistakes of the past, and is willing to make compromises to achieve that vision. Hearing stories of Calum, the Calm Asylum, it was Julian's idea to take advantage of its employment opportunity, intending for them to study the place and return to California flush with information. It was only after engaging with the community that he thought perhaps he could best try to influence it for the better. He believes he needs to only find a way to sway Maya's robotic thinking away from her ancient obsessions. 
Weekly stability more compliance. That's not bad. I like the weekly stability a lot. Now, the first employee, though, is more like being part of one weird family. Patrick Barr Jr., the first person I ever hired after deciding to rebuild the Commissar personally, is an 83 year old man who's been living in the Commissar most of his life. 64 years ago, he's just a young man from the settler community around Evanston. He had decided to try his luck at pilfering whatever old world tech he could get from what he said to be an old robot filled ruin. But on breaking into the column cell, he was discovered by Maya, who blithely asked him if he was here about the position. Patrick played along, hoping to avoid death, and inadvertently became Maya's first employee. Patrick has acted as an advisor and scout for Maya all these years. His insights have proven invaluable to her in time and time again. However, among the modern asylum community, he is known to be something of a recluse. He doesn't like to discuss his experience with others. Try it. You don't. Local followers, it's not bad. Political power, that's, that, that, some of these are just generic, you know. I like they have names, but... Hey, target and growth speed? Humble humanitarian. I like that weekly compliance change. Growth change. Stability change. I can speak. I've got words I can use. Exactly. Uh, well, I already did all that stuff, so there's no point in doing that then. We gotta fix this stuff, too. Special forces. Special forces are still very good and special. How many men have we lost? 36 versus 800 almost? That's pretty good. Uh, local follower. Peace of Christ. Canaanites. Work optimizer. Well, we're going to go with the robots. We can load our defense just a little, a little bit. Proving conditions. Jobs typically arise in less developed regions of the world, hence it fails, falls with to develop Lone Tree's land for both of our sakes. The biplane fighter is ready to go. Nice. Good stuff. We have an air base though. That's a real question. No. No, we want to appear up, but it's not great. We're going to Eborn in the south. Uh. <coughs> Ordering the orderlies. If you're into this, please go ahead. Boop. Sound from the front. Um, four sports a little more difficult to get, so we'll go grab that one. Same new ideas, huh? Reviling on loyalists. Ma's been building the society for about 100 years now. Generations of orderlies and citizens have grown up under a benevolent reign. These people have ideas that won't take shake the boat and they'll support the common asylum as it stands. Help them out. The best we can. Treasure trove. Hey, that's pretty great. A lot of mana raffle territory as well. We'll do that in a little bit. So this is not bad. That's pretty good. Human targeting firmware. Well, we need more CNC bots, don't we? Uh, we need CNC bots, period. Scrap bots. There's none there. So. There you go, very nice. Cost cutting measures. The way Nicole Bogard sees that we've already got the means to produce killing machines, and the order lizard just bodies the whole of lime. Therefore, she proposes we scrimp and save on them and keep the cash to support all expanding their robotic counterparts. 
Well, alrighty. I'm just pretty good. Push forces, push forces is fine for now. I mean, they're, they're giving us quite a bit of XP, which I do enjoy, don't get me wrong. But, like, bro. Pico Designer. Uh, I guess APCs would be fine, probably. Costco to measures, not bad, not bad. Specialist Core. Uh, Nicole proposed that we maintain a small core of elite forces to fill the roles and robots cannot. She assures uh, she and Cedric have more than enough contacts to help us fill in these roles. How much influence does he have? Seven. Just gotta keep an eye on him, that's all. Good. Our special forces should be better than your special forces. Absolutely. Good. Drop plane attackers are awesome too. I completely forgot about planes too. My bad. Boop. Uh, or support. Hey, look at that. Nice. Good job, guys. We got Eagle Rock. Oh, and the ships that we have are currently from Highland Watch, so not bad. Don't, mean. Don't get me wrong, they're not great, but still. So can we demand our rifle territories? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Hey, let's see the territory. Bolin are ultimatum Jordan, Day of Hounds of Day, as seen wisdom and relayed the message accepting our territory demands. Now the soldiers are withdrawn from the border, and our own troops have rather moved to occupy the contested territory. While the situation remains tense on the border, for now, war between two countries has been averted. Not oh, great. What well, is awkward? Uh, would we be able to hold here at all? Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Mining your Uncle Sam. According to Maya's programming, the best army in the world existed some 200 years ago. And all we have to do is emulate them to succeed. William Dearborn's keen enforcement reg regiment of old world discipline himself. So we're going to hold here as best we can. We're not going to go in. We're just here to literally hold the line. Um, Should have a cast soon. Better for Hoover Dam. Very nice. Very nice. Don't speak. How much political power do we have? 1.67. That's not bad. Because if you guys can attack, we can kill off a lot of enemy divisions here. So we're going to save. Hold out as best we can. And kind of go from there. Because I don't want you guys to attack in the north. I want, if anything, I want you guys to hold. I want you guys to get here and split them up. Try on your boots, clean your rifle. Mr. Dearborn has observed that few in the waste and understand the value of cleaning and maintaining. Uh, people leave houses dirty, weapons break down, everyone looks like they've been growing more for the past centuries. Clearly they need some good old-fashioned discipline and routine maintenance to help throw them out. Robots, I need you to go in. In the north, they're gonna hold fine for now. Good. Get in. Come on. Inspirational life giver. Um, 
sniper. Yeah. Hey, we got him. Nice. Good job, guys. Now we can retreat north so we can help uh, up here, too. Get in. Get in. Nice. Get across. We've encircled them. Good. Leaving this open is not a good idea, but whatever. If we can move fast enough, it won't matter. Call the nation. My needs wants you for the column of solemn orderlies. That's true. All right, that's right command. Aggressive roboticist. We can do better. Valerie Clement and her younger brother Julian were born impoverished citizens of the NCR. Their family turned to the followers for aid, and the siblings grew up and integrated into the followers' community. Julian specialized in psychiatry, whereas Valerie became a computer robotics technician. Having been beyond the frontiers of the NCR territory, Valerie has been shaken by what she's seen. Miserable refugees in Ruby Valley, the drug-addled underbelly of New Reno, and the aftermath of goodness knows how many rays. These experiences have made her sensitive to perceived injustice. Only where the followers seek to employ diplomacy, Valerie would rather raise a rifle. When Julian proposed going to the Commissalum, it was only supposed to be a temporary job to stay the place and leave. From the start, Valerie was intrigued by the possibility of replacing its alleged robotic ruler and using its resources for better purposes. Purposes the followers may not entirely approve of, even now. As the Commissalum's chief roboticist, she awaits uh, the opportunity to act. Good, keep them in place as best you can. And do whatever we can to not die, pretty much. Should be able to hold there, yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Good to see that. Good to see that too. Keep them in place as best you can. There are but a few divisions, that is all. Please don't let them move at all. Hey, you got rid of one right there, which is awesome. Uh, military command, make you I feel like to rattling cry. Keys the population, maybe. Robotics equipment, less, I don't like less reliability. Level. Caps expenses, man with a plan, rattling cry. Ask what you can do for a country today. Major Wendy Sykes reveres, serves as a recruitment officer for the Column of Asylum's orderlies. Energetic and enthusiastic, she has done an exceptional job in service to mine in the Column of Asylum. Most assume she's simply patriotic to some degree. Those that ask here will hear the history of the Hollowed Wings tribe, which lived a nomadic ex existence within the nearby wasteland until they were discovered by Mayo. They believe the woman of metal to be a divine being. Uh, although they did not fully understand the request she made of them, she knew she wished for them to act as protectors of her wondrous palace, the Calm Asylum. As a reward for the service, Ma graced them with clothes and tools from heavens and christened them with new names. Once to be ra raised as a siding wind, when received what she was informed as a nice American name. When his enthusiasm for the illustrious ruler began on, on that day and persisted ever since. Canaan Connection. Where are those caps? There's me. Dominica Hart of new, is a new Canaanite leader, trader. Her family was once a prominent merchant house that enjoyed privilege and political connections. However, a religious scandal saw her father's reputation destroyed and the fortunes of the family dwindled with it. Determined not to live a life of poverty, Dominica looked for lucrative opportunities of her own. Although trade with New Canaan has been gone going for some time, uh, the common son remained somewhat difficult to deal with due to Demaya's eccentricities. Once Cedric Karras became a fixture there, Dominica was lucky and charming enough to negotiate a good deal with her own merchant house. Thus, more trade than ever flows between Canaan and the common salon, and Dominica makes the lion's share of profits. Sounds awesome. Uh, that's not bad. As a primrose, we're probably good to do too. Call of the Nation. Calling uh, Claiborne. Deploy Claiborne's carbine special operatives with better equipment than usual. Huh. As an exact company mercenary, Henry Claiborne had the good fortune of legitimately acquiring some good gear after tactically withdrawing from Zack Company in the twilight years. Maybe a dog would have come home to heal if the lights and caps at him. Maya's is a calm leader's one true leader, a ruler. Tiffy.
Help him out. Best we can. Cool. And then, throw everyone on the line. I'll do a general attack. I think we should be fine here. Sure, some surveyors will be all right. Whoopsie. Uh, I want to wait for that one. Medivac. Some new ideas. Outsiders have much to teach us. If we're to become a more effective society, then we must be willing to introduce these new ideas and implement them. Oh. Claiborne's carbines, huh? Not as good as what we already have, but whatever. Bye, Mount Rushmore. Hardly knew you. Good. Alright. Let's go in. See what we can do. One singular infantry division is doing that. Well, that's not good. Order bottles, please. Probably want to kill a black canyon. Hopefully, they die first, though. Working is nice. Good stuff. Well, I guess I might as well go here next. Well, what else we got down here? Blimp acquisition. Eagle Rock is known for producing blimps, both for combat and trade. Perhaps we should acquire some for our own purposes? Probably not going to use them, but that's alright, though. There you go. Nice job, everybody. Oh. Uh, well, then. Twin mommies, huh? Oh, you're. Uh, oopsie. Forgot about this. There you go. Let's upgrade it. <coughs> Excellent. Total value is 3.3 thousand. Total value. Trade value. Total trade value. <sighs> Those that taste of flight. As a nation rooted in air travel, there are many natural scale pilots flowing in and around Eagle Rock. We should consider enacting, encircling, or tasking them. Some of them. Please come join us. I've actually never read this before. A total on one dockyards, 11 mail factories, 8 cities. So that's it, effective. Huh. Well, it's not super great, but it's something. Something to work with, you know? Good, good, good. We need factories here. Old World Blues, unfortunately. Well, a follower and a con walk into a country. It's not the setup to a joke. Maya believed it was, primarily because she cannot wrap her synthetic rain, brain around an entire nation of people who claim Mongolian cultural heritage has survived in America for nearly 200 years. But they're still here and they're on their board, so we'll do well to have a check in with them. Lunar trauma. Real question is, what is what isn't insane about Ouroboros and the society Akate constructed? And yet the wasteland seems to have normalized their ilk. Agricola's legacy. The company Agricola is employing a number of advanced mining robots in the vicinity of the Burnham Springs. We can study their designs for own robotic forces. Good. Did I miss anything here? No, we're looking pretty good on that stuff. Good, good, good. Lots of guns. Spending more robots. Always important. Uh, sure, why not? Essentially, the cons appear to have been caught between the influences of the different factions. Lauren sat the report down the boardroom table, and there's a degree of uncertainty about how they'll respond. Uh, Amgalon's grip of power has always been loose and may slip from, his, uh, from him altogether, eventually. Well, then. Perhaps we should consider a diplomatic mission to offer them our support, June said. I'm not convinced relations with the cons are in our best interest. Perhaps we should instead forward 
Oh, be quiet, straight laces. Lawrence merely cocked an eyebrow in response to Valerie's use of his nickname. The ladies remember to show decorum in the boardroom, Mr. Miss Clement. Valerie barely reacted to Maya's soft rebuke, but until the cons demonstrate any meaningful hostility towards us, there's no harm in exploring potential relations with them. Lawrence nodded, fully intending to respect Maya's wishes. <clears throat> Seeing as the followers has some connections there, it's, I believe it's best if we handle any mission to the cons, Julian said. Perhaps I might even secure additional employees for the Calm Well, that's well and good, Cedric gleaned for, but my, Calm Minds is his other interests. I've heard the cons have a flourishing chemical industry we might benefit from, but and I can negotiate a deal for us. The pharmacological department could benefit from a stable partner, I must admit, Lena looked at Maya. The cons typically deal in chems that impact people's mental health. If we invite that business, we can be sure those chems will reach your citizens. You really don't want this. Julian's words brought all eyes on Mile. Let the followers meet their kin. Julian will gain influence. Support for settling down will grow. Cedric will gain influence. Con trade. Support for old ways will grow. Actually, the matters of state are my responsibility. Mile gain influence. There you go. That calm inspiration, huh? Oh, they are very calm. Very cool and collected. Go ahead, it's fine. So I don't have to deal with it, for the most part. Psychic so Ouroboros. In conclusion, Jordan Day is a product of Ouroboros' apparent culture, and many others have been indoctrinated. Towards her primal strength, and until recently, Ekate herself. More rhetoric will be necessary if we wish to rehabilitate the populace of Ouroboros. If I was know about Valerie Clement, given that Jordan Day killed Ekate to assume leadership, I believe he is not as indoctrinated as one might believe, and thus ought to be punished as a regular criminal. Advisory note, Lena Ashton, given their propensity, propensity to fall behind strong rulers, perhaps a little red could supplant this Jordan Day with yourself. It may seem absurd at first, but consider how the occupation may be eased if they think they're doing what they normally would. Just consider a psychological trick. Even the ruler deserves treatment. You may benefit from this course of action later. I don't. Julian gets a lot of influence. I'm able. You know, the next time I play this, Julian, I might play as Julian. So, American law would demand their ruler face punishment. I like the stability. As a means to an end, perhaps I can worship the metal lady. That's right. True ruler. Cool. Okay, you're doing alright. Join him. Promethean coal. Oh, you little spurtle ones. Tear down the pyramid. Oh, the eerie baron. Oh. Oh, so it's either one of these two that we get. Clipping wings versus this one. Look at those bots. It's good. <coughs> oh, tying it all together. We have subjugated a considerable swath of territory, but it remains a chaotic mess of occupations and unclear boundaries. We'll have to work hard to transform this place into a functional state. The Casper out. Ooh. Or we keep going on. The Canaan Connection. New Canaan has long been a stable country with better institutions than most in the area. They have people that could be used as psychiatric staff, but the calm asylum has been able to attract them for various reasons. Now that they're part of the West and safer and stronger, more of Canaan's educated individuals are considering a career with us. Dominica Hart will know how to agree some wheels for us on the front. Yell, Red Cell. The report is informing you as to the incident revolving the writer gang known as Red Cell. They attacked a merchant caravan, coming from New Canaan, taking everything they could and leaving few survivors. The Red Cell are known to be proponents of the sinister old world ideology known as communism. They are the belief that action against the rich is justified in the name of bringing equality to the world. As disturbing as this is, that has earned them some popularity with impressionable individuals in marginalized communities in the wasteland. They have been known to bribe these people in order to ha have them shelter Red Cell when necessary. The caravan is demanding we do something. I understand that they would be satisfied to be compensated for the loss, but we would have to pay them ourselves. Alternatively, if we show we're doing something about Red Cell, it might allay their fears, but Red Cell's popularity in certain regions means any action against them will aggravate the locals. We're certain that the merchants will make their anger known if nothing is done. Thus, I request you apply with orders at your earliest convenience from Lawrence O'Hara. Compensate the caravan company. Root out these filthy communists. Oh dear, what are we to do? And get rid of them. That's how you deal with commies. Tying it all together. Optimize trading? 
Sure, why not? We can use more money. Lots of training clubs for solar training. Yeah, that's not bad. Inviting foreign capital. Sure, we could struggle for years to build homegrown industries you may control entirely, or as Cedric insists, we can invite business magnates from other countries to invest in us. They get a piece of our pie, our pie gets bigger, everyone wins. Can we do all of them? The Road of the Boulder. Chosen by Ben. Old or Blues. The Ghost Immunity. This report is to inform you that a request has come in from a community on our periphery. A small town known as Humphrey's Peak has been overrun by a group of malcontents known as the Volker Brigade. Led by a super mutant that came to advance some strange ideology called the Unity. I'm informed of something that originated in California over a century ago, although this major Volker apparently recruits humans without forcibly mutating them. Regardless, he and his crew are bullying the town to giving them supplies and even pressuring the residents to join the brigade. Not free speak is now within our jurisdiction, but failing to aid the request might make communities lose faith in the orderly orderlies. However, the Volker Brigade is well supplied and will be hard to dislodge from a position so far from our core territories. I await your orders, Lawrence O'Hara. Drive them away. Drive them away. Quantity. Better recovery rate. Less reliability, unfortunately. Better factory output and reinforced rate. Factory output. Oh, better soldiers' losses. No combat or quality. Better supply use. Way more HP for everyone. Maintenance gets extremely good. More breakthrough, soft attack. Defense. Oh, yeah, this is the way we gotta go. I gotta get more maintenance then. Plus 20. Wow. Maintenance, you are next, my guys. Who do go to war with next? Is my question. Because we could really use the robots. Securing an old purchase. Before the war, director of Matheson of the Pleasant Mines Asylum had arranged for something to be developed at the Boulder Dome facility. It was nearly completion prior to the bombs dropping. Maya feels it's time to finally pursue this. She believes this ancient acquisition is key to achieving the vision of the Calm Mines Asylum. The only question is how to proceed. Usurper. Cedric has overseen the signing of a trade contract with a new caravan company, the Faded Winds for the East. Just as the ink was drawn on the paper, Maya marched away into his office. Mr. Harris, we must speak, she announced. Can't wait. Mr. Wright was just... We will talk now, Mr. Wright. Please excuse us. With an awkward glance at Cedric, Wright walked out of the office. So what's the urgent you risk upsetting your guests? That is a problem, Mr. Harris. Contract with the Mines L Calm Mines LLC must be approved by me as acting executive. You seem to have forgotten this. In fact, you're forgetting this frequently as of late. Maya's face was impossible to read, but Cedric could tell she was as mad as a robot woman could be. Look, it was a good deal. You would have accepted it, too. I'm just trying to be expedient. Or expedient. Unacceptable. This company has rules for a right reason. Or do you think of yourself above them? Cedric knew he was treading on thin ice. The question was whether to keep talking the risk or to keep his head down for now. He promised obedience, but delivered none. He thought it was best to dial back for now. So Cedric is getting very influential, we'll say. Because he's now at 10. He's being looked at as a leader. Well, whoops. Why do I swing the roll the boulder? Maintenance, please. I need to add to tank as well. I forgot about that. Special forces are still important, though. Sure. Nice. We have a lot with you for. Oh, let me see. Good. Throw the boulder. Uh, I believe the burning question is, Elena followed up my explanation, just what the product you're so focused on? I'm afraid that details regarding the product are classified under federal laws. None of you have received security clearances. I'm forbidden from describing it to you. As an explanation that caused a stir among the board, Ma had never sat at such an excuse before. But I assure you the product is critical to the function of the Calm Minds Asylum. What are we waiting for then? Let's send in this bots and the boys in white, Valerie said casually. Whoa, 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 hang on, Julian waved his arms for effect. The Twin Mothers tribe is not some sort of, sort of band of psychopaths. They have become more militant after the traumatic experience, but I believe Diana can be reasoned with. Uh, Jules, Valerie pat him on the shoulder. Did you forget even our fellow followers abandoned her? 
That doesn't mean they want to invade. They want us to invade them. Oh, come on, Jules, Cedric mockingly mimicked Valor's nickname for him. Don't tell me a little bit if you doesn't want to smite her for betraying your principles. Decorum please, my raised her hand preemptively, anticipating the oncoming argument. She was divided on the issue herself. She needed that product, but the Twin Mothers tribe was not a gadball of raiders like the Black Canyon society they had replaced. She had also seen reports that indicated that Diana Stone was what remained of a pre-war U.S. citizen. Perhaps that was worth preserving. Maya needed that product, the sooner the better. Maya said reach out to, fel to a fellow American. She will get influence. Cedric will get... Oh, crap. Oh. Negotiating access. Negotiate for access to Boulder Dome with the Black Canyon. You have made to make concessions to achieve certain results. Actual peace shall do... Due to impending update for Black Canyon. We'll revisit later. Well, I'm glad I didn't choose that route then. Find diplomacy. Clearing the path. Chosen by event. Why should we get to negotiate with a bunch of vagabonds that infest government property? Pushing out the malcontents that surround Boulder will be better for everyone, but especially ourselves. The goddess in her domain. What happened to the Twin Mothers tribe is very unfortunate, but we can allow Diana's lust for vengeance upon the waste interfere with their mission. If they will not stand down, we will force them to their knees. Well, I don't know how strong we are. We've got planes, which is very good, don't get me wrong. But are we really, 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 really ready for all that stuff? And the robots are pretty darn weak, not gonna lie. Go to this one. There's people across the way, some with mechanical talents. With the right incentives, we can attract them to work for us. There may be a limit on how many we get, but we'll get every single one we can. Do we have any support equipment? We're not even making any right now. Waste management, work optimizer, more output alike. Caps expenses though. You only get so much done when you're not packed in like a sardine. Born in Vault 27, a Lena Ashton worked on one of the Vault's science teams as a chemist. While she enjoyed a privileged position, the conditions of Vault 27 were always stressful due to the overpopulation. She would have gladly done, gone elsewhere, but she knew nothing of the wasteland. One day, a story from the Ghost Division was passed around. It spoke of a pre-war hospital some way to the west, which was recruiting numerous professionals, including chemists, bargaining as for an escort. Lena made her way to the commissarium and offered her services. As she had vault tech experience, Maya made her the head of the pharmacology department. Lena is now content to go on making what medicine she can for the calm asylum till kingdom come. Um, yeah, I like this one the most, and it's fine. So if we save, we go to war, what happens? I hope we get some cores here, because if not, I mean, we have all this political power for a reason, but still. Oh, the Mila start attacking us. Interesting move. But if we attack them too, can we win? Because we are doing some serious damage to them. Because we're not winning in some places. Definitely not winning in some places. But we're definitely doing okay in some places. Losing quite a few guys, but so are they. Maintenance company's good. Better support equipment, good. She gets a lot of air XP here doing this. And if we take them over, we get some free robots. Well, I guess not really free, but still. Headhunting mechanics. Uh-huh. Okay. Synth synthetic thought patterns. Questions always float on the lips of the robotics division. What if they could recreate androids like Maya herself? Of course, creating a full-blown copy of Maya as she would be is prohibitively expensive and likely beyond their skills, but perhaps it could emulate some of her te technology and simpler mechanical devices. Rick will implement a simple combat algorithm in the robots, but he'll get it done cheap. Of course, image is not very good too, so what do you expect? That's right, you expect better. You're going to become a robot person anyway, so... Good. Well, overall, we're still winning quite a bit. We lost a lot of guys, though. Can you even 
cut off paradise, you can circle a lot of divisions here. All right, so you're going to wait. I want to win here, and then we're going to hold. Oops, oh, that's not bad. Hold. Oh, hello. What happened here? Wait, when did they get over here? Hmm. Well, that's not good. I wonder what happened. Like, what the heck? Why did it, why was it was so easy for a second there? Scrap trucks, basic weaponry, support equipment. Vision recovery breakthrough would be good. I do like this one. Psychological warfare. Typically, Ma would not want to rely, rely on this brave brava, bravado character. It appears to follow a strange and distinctly un American culture, however. She heard him talk about how warfare is psychological in nature, and she felt all intrigued by his proposals. Reviving the Rangers. Kristen Beckwith, a follower of the Rangers tag along, has offered to train a new organization of Rangers to be placed at La Calma Salem's disposal. Ma is keen to do so, though she's imagining them like the U.S. Army Rangers and not these desert Rangers she keeps hearing about. Um, idealistic military? As far as Kristen tells, the desert Rangers were not like mere killers. They fought for a cause. They fought to defend innocent people against the hideous and unjust forces of the wasteland. It's an ideal Kristen wants us to impart on our army. But where is armor? Barado's tribe apparently had a tradition of keeping a, upkeeping, a select few pieces of power armor. He is the only one of the calm silent with a considerable experience in its use, and Miles keen on having him impart that knowledge onto the orderlies. The armor hunt. There's always more somewhere to find old suits of power armor. We'll probably do some work to get him in better condition, but we'll have some. And packing up old kit bags. They won't solve all our problems, but some decent equipment will make our forces more effective, so. I think we're gonna end it there. We're doing actually really well, and uh, we're expanding, and we're having a little difficulties here and there, but what happens is what happens, so. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on expanding the calm mindset to all Americans. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.